judging me? You better not be judging me. So, to, I think you figured out what I want to talk about today. Uh, I was listening to Do the Bible earlier. At least I think that's the show that got the idea in my head. I believe it was. And, uh, J. Vernon McGee, and he was talking about, I don't even remember exactly what it was now. But it got me thinking about this. It says this in here, the Holy Bible, that if we see our brother and sister in Christ struggling with a sin, maybe not a sin in particular, but something hard, you know, but maybe the, for the sake of this video, it's a sin. Or maybe we see him drifting that way. It says that we're supposed to confront them about it lovingly. Yeah, let me just read it to you. Galatians 6 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Spirit of meekness. You know, don't be. A jerk about it if you're going to confront them about your sin so did you just come up alongside of them put your arm around them listen I know what you're going through I, or I see what you're going through I've been there I know where this leads and I don't want to see you go there so what can I do can I help you through this can I just share my life experience with you and uh, maybe help you get through this so you don't stumble and fall out of the faith and end up doing something with Joker. And, you know, when you do that, what do you think? You think you're hoping that their response will be like, oh, bless you, sister, thank you. I am, I'm really struggling with this, and it's really hurting my walk with God. Now, hopefully... Uh, if you ever end up in a situation where you have to do this, I hope that's the response you get. However, we all know if you ever had to do that, and I'm not saying I have, but I know people have. And what's the response that you're probably going to get? Don't judge me. I'm this. Don't worry about how I'm living my life. That's usually the response you're going to get. And on top of that, uh, they're going to defend themselves. And they're going to do it by taking scripture out of context. Because <laughs> that's the only way you can uh, justify sin. Is by taking scripture out. I mean, if you're a Christian. And the uh, only way you can justify sin is to uh, take scripture out of context. And... I probably don't have to ask this, but I will anyway. What's the number one story that people cherry pick out of this book to defend their sin against? Well, let's just go there. Do -do -do. You got your answer yet? If your answer was Jesus and the adulterous woman, you're correct. So, I want to read this little part here, and this is the one part they use all the time. Now, you know, the Pharisees brought the adulterous woman to Jesus and because they wanted to trick him into saying something that could condemn him. And they said, hey, we caught this woman committing adultery. Moses says we're supposed to, you know, and the law says we're supposed to stone her. What do you say? So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. That is the part of this story that they will cut out and throw in your face. If you try to lovingly, I want to make sure I get that point across, lovingly confront someone about their sin. That's the part they'll pick out. But 
if you know the story, like I do, if you've studied the Bible at any length of time, is that where that story ends? Nope. That is not where that story ends. Where does it end? Oh, what is that? There's like two more verses that they didn't even put in their story when they were trying to defend their sin. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And Jesus was like, I uh, can't help but notice that everybody that accused you is gone. So, she said, no man, Lord. I don't see nobody. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. He's like, you got caught in sin. And I know you did. And I know that the law says that you got to be stoned to death. I'm not condemning you. I'm not condemning you for your past sins. And then what does he say? Go and sin no more. He didn't tell her, go on and keep sleeping around. You know, whatever his sin is. In his case, adultery. But he didn't say, oh, well, I, I'm not going to judge you for your past sins. Then go ahead and keep on sinning. He didn't say that. He's like, I'm not going to cut, I'm not going to judge you for your past sins. But don't sin anymore. In other words, this was kind of like she was a sinner. She got caught. They brought him, brought her before Jesus. Now she's saved, and he's telling her, "Now that you're saved, go and sin no more." And that's not the part people want to take out of that, though. When you confront them lovingly about their sin and they want to be like well you don't judge me you don't judge my life this is my life and I live my life how I want to live it uh, if you're a Christian uh, that's not exactly how it works you don't live your life according to how you want to live it because how you want to live it is sinful and wicked and uh, that's the whole reason that you asked Jesus in your heart to begin with. The whole reason God saved you. Because you're like, God, my life's wicked, and I'm a sinful person, but you please come and change me. And he does, and then he expects you to live a certain way. So, you don't become a Christian and then just keep on living life however you want to live it. There's certain things that's going to change. You asked him to change you. There's certain things that's going to change. So, if you're in a sin, or you know, and it's not all sins are out in the open where everybody can see them. But if someone comes up beside you, I notice this, or maybe you're not sinning, maybe they just see you, because they've been there before, and maybe they just see you heading in that direction, and they want to help you before you get too far to do something stupid. So the correct response is not, well, don't judge me. It's my life. That is the incorrect response. Jesus said, go and sin no more. And maybe you're sinning. Maybe you don't know it. Maybe it hasn't dawned on you. And here they come. Because they see it as an outsider looking in. And they know, like Galatians said, we're to bear one another's burdens. I don't think that was in Galatians one but it was in it was at the end but uh they know we're supposed to bear one another's burdens so they're coming up to help you bear this burden and the incorrect response is well this don't judge me and we hear it from non-believers all the time don't judge me well if i don't tell you i mean let me just chase a little right over here if i don't tell you about your sin and how are you? How else are you gonna know? I mean, obviously, you get to a point where your flesh and your conscience 
are not on speaking terms. But anyway, I'm not. It's my job to tell you, see? It's my job to tell you that you're a sinner, but you're a sinner, but God has sent a way to take care of that. It's my job to tell you. Anyway, okay, I'm done chasing that rabbit. But that was my video for today. If someone is going to come up to you lovingly, I want to say that, lovingly, not hypocritically, not I'm holier than thou, not legalistically come up to you. Well, I noticed that uh, when you pulled by the other day, I heard you listening to this worldly song, and I just said, you shouldn't be listening to it. Okay, chill out. Uh, but you probably won't meet that many people like that. Most people that are Christians, especially if you know them, because, I mean, you're not going to surround yourself with terrible Christians, you know. You're going to surround yourself with Christians that you love and they love you. And, I mean, if not, then you should probably do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So if they're going to, if you're going to surround yourself with people like that, and they're going to be lovingly coming up to you and be like, how can I help you? Let me help you through this. So on and so forth. But, yeah. Don't think that when someone comes up to you and points out a sin, they don't, don't judge me. And unless they're living, I mean, and their life is even more sinful than yours, then by all means, they probably shouldn't be judging you. But if a saint of God comes up to you, don't judge me. You're not supposed to be, if you're saved, you're not supposed to be sinning. You're not, now, there's some that you can't help to do, some thoughts that you have that are sins and at the end of the day, you're like, God, forgive me for having this thought I had today, but you can't do anything about that. You're human. It, it, it is what it is. Don't get an attitude with people when they're just trying to help. That's my video for today. So, anyway, uh, the YouTube thing is going to take a little while. I did not realize it took so long to upload a video. I uploaded a video Sunday. It took two hours to upload it. That was my, probably be my internet connection. Cause it sucks but I don't know maybe that's it but I got 16 17 counting today videos that I have to upload on my channel there so it'll be all caught up and nice and organized and stuff so until then I'm just going to post them on here on Facebook so there's an update on that so but if you want the YouTube channel I'll, I'll let you know what it is I mean I've only got one video on there but that's the video for today. I'll try to get one in Thursday, probably Friday. Uh, we'll see what happens. So until then, pick up your cross and carry on.